tell you, I can't believe I'm doing makeup on YouTube. This is just too funny. I never thought I would do this, but it's a beauty channel, so. Hi everyone, this is Angela from Someone with Gray Hair reviewing silver gray and white wigs. Other times I'll review products that have to do with our natural gray, silver, or white hair. And today I want to just tell you that tomorrow at 5.30, tomorrow, Friday, January 22nd, I'm going to do my first live stream. So I just want to let you know right up at the top of this video if you want to join me. Love to see you there. We will have the chat enabled. It's going to be my first one, so who knows who knows what's going to happen, but I think it will be fun and I hope that it will be informative. If you have any questions, get ready with your questions and I'll answer as many of them as I can. So, yes, I'm sitting here with no makeup on today. <laughs> Before I talk about that, um, I just wanted to let you know that uh, the review on the Zima pillowcase, remember that, um, well, immediately after that review, if you remember, if you notice, if you go back and look at that review, it looks like there's something wrong with my camera. And so, but I wanted to get the review out. It was done. I know it wasn't perfect, but done is better than perfect sometimes. And, but I did want to tell you that I absolutely love that Zima pillowcase. And when I was doing my research for the pillowcase, I looked up mulberry silk. And one of the things that I forgot to tell you in the review was that there are different grades, I guess, of mulberry silk. And the grade that I had was grade 19. And I think that the Blissey pillowcase is um, 22. So apparently that's why Blissey is charging more. I have to read a little bit more about that. But having said that, I love that pillowcase. Um, I used to get really hot. You know how your, your pillowcase gets hot? It doesn't get hot. I don't have the creases in my face when I first wake up in the morning. My hair is not stuck to my head. It looks almost as full as when I went to bed. And so kudos to the people who tell us about silk pillowcases. Yeah, they're pricey, but hey, if you have a birthday coming up or an anniversary, drop a little hint and maybe you'll get a really beautiful silk pillowcase. So I just wanted to let you know why I didn't come back on camera. My, my computer was in the shop for three days and I work on a Mac um, when I do my, my editing. So um, I wasn't able to edit. So there you go. But I had kind of a vacation from, from all that for three days and used it to do, to do some reorganizing. So as you can see, I'm in my bedroom and well, actually it's my guest room, which has become my studio now. Um, and it's an, it's just a nice place to work. So, um, yeah, I'm sitting here with no makeup. Uh, a few of you have asked me what I use on my skin. You're so sweet to, <laughs> you're so nice to tell me that, uh, you think that I have nice skin. Um, believe me, I've got plenty of those wrinkles that those of us who are older women have, but I do try to take my, I do try to take as good care of my skin as I can. And my mother had, has, still has beautiful skin. And so a lot of it is DNA. Some of it is products that we use over the years. And of course, a lot of it is not being exposed to the sun. So, and using our SPF 50. But I did want to tell you what I use on my skin. Okay, and then at the very, very end, I'm going to put on Belinda. And Belinda is by Envy. All right, so here we go. Now, the very first thing I want to tell you is that I use Josie Marin's Divine Drip. Now, this is really a night cream, but my skin is so dry, it needs all, all the moisture it can get. So often I will use this during the day. And I did put this on in the morning. And... I just washed my whole face again. Well, not deep clean, but, you know, just moistened it and then put on my moisturizer. Now, here is a really great tip that I think I got from Wayne Goss. I think that's his name. Fabulous makeup artist. And what I do 
with my brush, whatever brush I use, now this brush that I used to put on my foundation, which is already on by the way, this was this brush is by Laura Geller. I, per, I got this with, um, oh, let's see, I think I got some product from Lauren Geller from QVC a while back. And this is a great brush because this is a stippling brush. And stippling is just when you push, you just push the product right into the skin. It, it, it comes from, you know, artists do stippling, actual artists you know, who work with oils and that, they push, 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 push. And it's just a great technique for building layers. But before you put your foundation on, you're just going to take whatever hydrating mist you have. I bought this one at my local health food store. It wasn't expensive. It's basically just water. And um, just spray your brush. And the reason that I do that is because the foundations that we use are so pricey that... I just feel like if my brush is, is moist, it doesn't suck up as much of the product. So the foundation that I use, sorry about the way it looks, but it's I've had it for a long time. Um, I use It Cosmetics CC Plus Color Correcting Cream, 50 plus SPF. And this is in the color light. And by the way, light sells out very quickly. So if you're light, just kind of keep an eye on it. Again, I got this from QVC a couple of years ago. And this will probably last me, oh, another six months. So even though it's a little on the high-end side, it lasts a long time. So I just put, I just squirt a little, I'm not going to do it because I already did it. I squirt a little bit on the top of my hand and you really don't need a lot. And then I take my fingers and I dab it into the little, the little, the product. And then I go like this, and I put it on both of my middle fingers, and then I just tap it all over my face. And I always start with the apples of the cheek, because that's the biggest part of my face, and that's the takes takes the most product. And so then I just take this brush, and I stipple it all in. That's it. That's all I do. So then, after that, um, I usually do my eye makeup. So... What I'm using now is an eyeliner by Lily Lolo. Lily Lolo. My husband told me about this product. My husband is, a, is, a, is an eye care professional. He's an eye doctor. And um, there was an article about how wonderful this is for your eyes. I had been having some issues with my breakouts on my eyes and I thought uh oh maybe my mascara is old something like that so um, he told me about this and again I will link below you cannot get this at Amazon and it, it's not inexpensive but it, again it lasts a long time it's not self-sharpening um, it's not self-sharpening you have to sharpen it and I just use you're going to laugh. I just used this little sharpener that I've had probably since I was 18. <laughs> this thing's been with me. But it works great on whatever product I have. So, okay. So all we're going to do, I'll get closer. I'm going to put it underneath my lid. I don't put too, too much up there. I know they call that type line, tight, tight lining. And then I'll do the other one. Some people can do this without lifting their lid. I can't do it like that. Okay, and then I just, let me do this mirror. And then, of course, I'll just put it on the bottom lid. Not too much. Remember, this is just my everyday makeup. And then I'll do the other one. Try not to pull your skin down too much. That's very delicate skin there. Years ago, I was Mary Kay uh, director. And uh, before being a Mary Kay director, I, wa I worked for Estee Lauder and I worked for Elizabeth Arden Red Door Salon in D.C. That was a lifetime ago. But I learned a lot of, a lot of tricks there. 
Um, then I went into the real estate business and the rest is history. I, I was a realtor, broker realtor, owned my own business for, gosh, 25, 25 years. Okay, so now you've got your eyeliner on. Now, um, and I just recently retired from real estate because honestly, I didn't want to get involved with all the COVID and opening up houses and disinfecting and nope. I said, okay, I guess it's time to stop. So now the next thing, oh my goodness, you hardly can see this anymore. This is from Tartelet. Tartelet. And again, I got this on uh, QVC many years ago, I think two or three years ago. And it's, of course, it's a palette and uh, has some really nice colors. And so right now I'm going to, now I didn't put anything on my eyelids. Remember, I didn't put any primer, but I feel like I should put something on there. I don't know what I can use. I can use this concealer. I usually use this if my foundation doesn't do a good job on my cheeks, because that's where the um, veins are, then I'll use the Josie Marin concealer. I really like this. So I'll just pop a tiny bit of that because it, this one does okay. I mean, it's not really a primer, but it's better than nothing. And, and I'm just showing you now how, how I'm doing my makeup. So I don't, I don't mind if it creases. It's the end of the day. So now I'll just take a little brush and just smooth that out. Just kind of stipple it in a little bit right where it is. Wherever you place the product first is where you're going to have the most product. And all I'm doing is I'm not really dragging it. I'm just kind of pushing it into the skin. I hope you can see that. I'm just kind of pushing it in and then I'm going to just glide it right over the ba base of my eyelashes. And there's still a little bit more on the brush and I'm not going to bring it up here uh, underneath the brow, but I'll bring it right up into the crease. Okay, and then I'll do the other one. And then just go over base towards the base of the lash and then up into the crease again I'm I'm not really dragging it I'm just kind of pushing it stippling it okay so now put that brush aside then I will take this brush and I will put one of the darker colors not the black black but this one right here and I will put that close to my lashes. Now, if I was going out, glam makeup, all that, then I would do, um, I would do some eyeliner. I mean, actual eyeliner, maybe some false lashes. So all I'm going to do is just touch, touch it to the product, and then tap to get any excess off. And I'm actually going to use this mirror here, just because it's easier to see. And then I'm going to just push it right into the base of the lash. And I learned this technique from Nicole Johnson. I think her name is Nicole Johnson. And I think it's a great te technique. Because you want some kind of definition there, but you, you might not necessarily want a hard line there, especially for every day. I'm going to give it one more. You can see what I mean by why you want to have some primer. And this is heavily pigmented also. So, and that's really the difference between an inexpensive uh, eyeshadow and one that you got, you know, that's a, good, that's a really good one. It's going to be, have more pigment in it. And so you don't have to use as much of the product. Well, look at the difference in those two eyes. It's like this eye is just totally disappeared. <laughs> And then, oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you is see how the brush goes up at the end? It's kind of at an angle. 
Well, I'm going to, I didn't do it on the other eye, so I'm going to hold it at an angle up, with the pointy part up, just to hopefully give my eye a bit of a lift there. My eyes, unfortunately, go down. Okay, so that's that. Let me put pop a little bit more on there. And then what I'll do is I'll soften that with um, a lighter color. You'll see that shortly. Now I'm going to do that same thing on the other eye because I didn't do that. See how I'm aiming it upward? Aiming it upward and this like toward almost, well not almost, just like that on an angle. I'm aiming it even with that, the ed edge of that brow. And by the way, I don't use anything on my brows. So far, I haven't had to do anything about my brow. They seem heavy enough, but they I do notice that they're getting sparser. So, it is what it is, ladies, right? Okay. So that's that, and now I'll set that brush aside, I can clean that, and then we're going to take another brush, and this is one of my favorite brushes. I don't remember where I got it, but again, it's at an angle. See? And so now I'll take some of the lighter color, probably this one right here, almost doesn't matter. Take this one here, and then I'll just go right over at the edge, right over the edge to soften it on top. And then this little piece at the end, again, we'll take some more. And then I'll just work it inward, just like this. So that just softens the edge of it. Hope you can see that. Try not to drag things down. You know, don't take your don't take your brush and go down. Keep things lifted up. And honestly, I'm not an expert at that yet. I'm still, I'm still working on that. <laughs> I never had to wor worry about that so much. But anyway, um, and now let's do the other one. Otherwise, it's, it's going to take me forever to edit this. And again, you see I'm going right over the top. Just over the, not over the whole line, just over the, just over the top of the line. Oh, I want to give you a tip. I want to give you a tip. Um, are you disinfecting your, your makeup? I hope that you are. Um, how you can disinfect it? This spray bottle has 70% alcohol in it. Um, my husband got it, brought it back for me from Costco. You want to make sure that you use the isopropyl 70% alcohol. Don't use the 90% because the 90% from what I'm told, um, by Wayne Goss, I think he said it dries too fast and it's not on the product enough to disinfect it. But the 70% isopropyl al alcohol, again, you can get it at Costco, um, stays on the product long enough to disinfect it without ruining your your powders. So um, if you're not disinfecting things, make sure you do that. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to get this, this color right here. I have no idea what color that is. And then I'm just going to go right into the crease. And I'm going to push it right into that crease not going out to the edge, and I'm not going into the corner of the eye. 
sometimes I make a mistake and I go too far into the corner. I was looking at one of my videos the other day and I thought, oh dear, that's not good makeup job. So hopefully that helps a little bit with some uh, depth. Again, we'll do this one right up under the bone. Don't poke yourself in the eye. <laughs> I tell you, I can't believe I'm doing makeup on YouTube. This is just too funny. I never thought I would do this, but it's a beauty channel, so... If I can help my sisters, why not? Okay, so it's on, and, you ha and I have to be really careful because my skin... <sighs> You know what I'm saying. My skin is not 30-year-old skin. Our daughter, Brienne, has the most beautiful skin. We saw her the other day. I digress, but she had the, the, the heavy, you know, the line. The, the, I, think, I guess they call it a cat eye. And false eyelashes. And, oh, my goodness, she, oh, she just looked amazing. And... I'm so jealous because I can't do that. So now you're going to take this jealous in a good way. Youth is wonderful. We were all young once. So I'm taking this shape brush. And I'm sure all these brushes have, have names, but whatever they are, I don't know. Maybe someday I'll, I'll do some research on that. And then I'm just really buffing it out. Trying not to get it on the brow bone, right? Because we don't want that. And trying not to get it too far into the corner of my eye. And then we'll do it on the other one. Sometimes I take it and I just, you know, wipe it on my the side of my hand that doesn't have the makeup on it, hopefully. And then just so coming in and then going back out. Again, trying not to get it too far into the corner. And then I just usually just kind of stretch out my skin just a tiny bit because it's been beat up with the brush. <laughs> okay. Now, um, there's one more thing that we need to do with this brush. Now, remember I just disinfected this brush? Totally dry. You see that? I'm going to go back in and I'm going to get another dark color and just give some more definition to under the eye and kind of set the eyeliner that's there. A little bit more depth. Tap off the excess. It's time for the mascara. The mascara that I use is also by that company Lily Lolo. Lily Lolo. It's so cute. I usually do it for about 20 seconds. Left one is done. And the right one is done. Then, before I put it back, I'm just going to disinfect it, and then I actually do wipe that off. It's just a good practice, you know? You never know. Especially with a husband who's an eye care professional. All right, so here we go with the mascara. It'll come right up underneath. Come as close to your base as you can and just kind of hold it there for a minute. Wiggle the brush a little. If you get it on your face like I just did, just take your brush. No big deal. Oh, that's the alcohol. Take your, uh, your water and just dampen it. Just dab at it. When I used to work with Mary Kay, my director used to tell me that you should be able to do your makeup in 15 minutes. I mean everything. 
and this was this was glam makeup she was talking about 15 minutes and you should be able to do it in a moving car including mascara she obviously wasn't married to an eye doctor I don't think I would say you should be able to do it in a moving car well one thing I, I do that does kind of help is sometimes I just like right now I'm closing my my eyes are closed they're just closed and then I work on the edge of the lash you know maybe do it five or six times ten times and then I open them open my eye really really big and do the edge and then I come in and I do the toward the inside I don't put too much on the inside and I never put it on the bottom lashes I used to when I was little when I was little I used to when I was young but not anymore and if you do uh, you know how sometimes you blink and, and it gets underneath again just have your hydrating mist ready have your q-tips ready and then you can get it right away and this is not waterproof so it comes right off okay other eye remember I said come right underneath wiggle the brush gotta have the right angle wiggle the brush back and forth near the base keep that brush moving because the mascara is designed to dry fast keep it moving open the big do the base wiggle the brush so that's about it again I'm not putting anything on the bottom and then I will take the alcohol and I just go right around the edge I don't get it into the base of the product and then just wipe it with your Kleenex get it as clean as you can and I do kind of just dab this the uh, the stem there and then leave it open for a minute or so let it let it totally dry and then I'll screw it back down all right so we did the foundation, we did the eyeliner, we tight lined, we did the lower lid, we did the we did the concealer on the eyelid instead of the primer, and then we did the eyeshadow, and then we did the mascara. So that's not that much. I am now closing the mascara. Okay. Almost done. Two last things. Uh, which I will not do until after I get the wig on because I don't want to get anything on my wig. Linda is a straight layered face framing wig. I love her. And one of the reasons I love her, and I, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. I'm going to be doing some special classes about the different aspects about from wigs. But here's one thing you really want to look for, and I've talked about this before. You see that? Look, let me see if you could see my finger through there. Can you? Let me get something dark. The comb. You want one of these combs. Look. You could see the dark. You want something. You want... I don't mean to tell you you want, but... I suggest if you if you're looking for something that's realistic you can see through this wig and so what that's going to do is it's going to give a very realistic look near your scalp see look at the inside again I reviewed this but I'm not sure if I mentioned that in my review because I was such a new wig reviewer then but I can actually see my skin. It's very hard to see it on the video, but but believe me when I tell you that it makes a difference and it's lighter. The 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 denier or the denier, however you want to say it, the texture, the width, the heft, the how the wig feels, all how much hair is in there is so much lighter and it's so much more believable. Here we go. 
you want to take where the label is and just put your head like you're putting your head in a bowl. I know I see my hair up there. I don't wear hair, uh, do not wear a wig grip and I do not wear a wig cap um, when I own the wig because I, I don't need it. But if you do, oh wait, I told you I was going to put the, uh, the it stays on, remember? So, we can see that it's wet. See, it's kind of shiny, right? And I'm, all I'm going to do is put it right there. Believe me, that is enough to grab that wig. It comes right out with water. It's not going to ruin your wig. Do not be afraid. But this makes such a difference, ladies. I can't tell you what a difference this makes. It makes you feel so much more confident. So while I'm waiting for that to just get tacky, you want it to be tacky anywhere between 30 seconds and a minute. Let's do the blush. So now I have this great brush. Actually, I have a couple of great brushes, but I'll show them to you in a minute. So what I do is I just, again, this is It Cosmetics Live, Love, Laugh, Vitality Face Disc. <laughs> and I just tap it. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. It's not too much. Just make sure it's on the whole head of the brush. See? And then... Then you just look for the apple. Don't come too close to your nose. You shouldn't be coming past the middle part of your eye. Okay, here's your eye, middle part and up. And don't go in here. Okay, middle part and up. You notice I didn't do any contouring. Remember, this is day makeup. This is just quickie makeup. Although it doesn't seem like it's quick, does it? Because we're doing a video. That's that. And let's do the other one. Tap. You could tap, 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 or you could go around. Either one. Same thing. Watch where you put it. Not too close to your nose. Don't go past the middle of the eye. This way. Keep it up. Keep your apple kind of stretched while you do it. And then I'll put a little bit here and a little bit there. You could take a little bit of your dark contour if you'd like and put it there and there, especially those of us who are having white wigs because you really need some color in your face or you just totally look washed out. You really become invisible. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this and I'll put that right there just to show you for now. And then I'll put a little bit right here. But Belinda has a, a, a pretty long sweep of a bang. I'm not doing contour. I'm not doing anything down here. I am done with that. The It Stays is, is ready, but I've got it on my hand, remember? And I want to get it off there because I don't want the wig to stick to the glue. <laughs> That's on my hand. The things that we do. The things that we do. I learned this from Jill at uh, Jill's over on Jill's channel. If you watch Jill, um, I watched her the first time she had the it stays. I, the, well, not the first time, but I I learned what I'm doing from Jill over at Jill's wig channel. Jill's an esthetician. And I remember the first time that I saw her use this It Stays, and I, and I said out loud, I'm never doing that. <laughs> Guess what? All right, so now we have the label, and it's just going to put my head right in the bowl. All right, now remember, I've got the It Stays on there, so i got to move quickly. So there she's on. First thing I'm going to do is go look for the ear tabs. And make sure that they're evenly spaced on either side of my head. And they are. Push in the ear tabs. Then you can see 
You want to have four fingers like Patty over at Patty's Pearls says. And so let's do the four finger test. One, two, three, four. And there's my widow's peak, my trusty widow's peak. And the wig is on. Make sure it's my ears are out from under the wig. And it's on. And now I'm just going to start styling her. I haven't worn Belinda in, my goodness, a long time. And I always like to have the side sweep. If you watched me for any length of time, you know I love this side sweep bang. I just think it's a really pretty feminine look. Now, this bang is going to drop. So you definitely are going to need some kind of wig hairspray or, as I've shared with you before, um, where is it? Tresemme. You can use Tresemme. Just ha use it with a light hand. Uh, and I'm told by my friend who is a salon owner and does a lot of wigs. You'll be seeing her this year. Uh, her name is Glorious. And uh, she said you can use the Tresemme. So I'll just get it the way I want it. Now, if you do have bio hair, you saw that I do have hair. I just keep my head like this until I spray it. You could pull your hair out, but I'm not going to do that tonight. But you could, you certainly could. Give it a good shake, about 12 inches away. And you can see there's nothing wrong with the fibers of this wig. This wig is perfectly fine, it's silky, very light. The fibers, very light. I'll pull it behind the ear. I'll show you the back. Again, this is not a wig review, but if it's the first time you're seeing Belinda, you'd probably like to see what she looks like in the back. Make sure my hand isn't tacky. Right? Now, if you, if you remember on L, just the way L is made, the last wig that I reviewed, L kind of sticks up here by herself. She's just beautifully made there. But this one doesn't do that. So I have to help her with, uh, with the hairspray. But once I do this, she usually stays, unless it's windy. Right? So that's it. Now, she's on. Last thing. The part that I love. I just cleaned her off because she had powder all over her top. <laughs> so this is Hello Light Illuminating Power Powder. Okay, it's called Hello Light Illuminating Powder. I've had this for a while too. Um, so then I just take, no, that's the wrong brush. Trusty fan brush. Just sweep it over. I do it on both sides. And then I just take it right on my apple and I go right up the cheek, turn it around. Gives you a really nice glow right over the brow bone, top of the brow bone. That's it. Don't put it under there because I don't need it. And that's it for that. And then just spray your brushes. Disinfected. Spray this one. Wait for it to dry. I don't think I used that, but I'll spray that one too. Just good practice. 
Last but not least is our lipstick. And have you guys seen that video of that little girl that got into her mother's lipstick? I have to find it and, and put it down there for you. Maybe I'll take part of the video and do a split screen for you. Oh, it's so sweet. I was putting some lipstick on and then I was giving my pose. So you put, what you put on? Lipstick on. Oh, whose was that? It was, it was my lipstick. Oh, it was? Yeah. Did you ask anybody if you could put it on? I asked myself. <laughs> Did you see how it looked? Yeah. Called Hydro Boost. I love Neutrogena. And that stays in here. And then sometimes I'll take, um, depending upon how much I want my lips to pop, sometimes I'll just take a lighter color. I don't think, yeah, I do have Charlotte Tilbury. Let's see. This one, yeah. Oh gosh, ladies, I can't see it because, um, what is this? I think it's Valentine. It, it's one of her really popular ones. And I'll put it right over the red. Soften it. I think this is Valentine. And very nice. Charlotte Tilbury. That's it. That's my whole... Routine, I'll be here tomorrow, Friday, January 22nd, at 5.30. I hope that you'll come and see me, and it'll be an adventure. I'm going to need grace. <laughs> it's my first time. <laughs> so, um, thanks so much for watching. If you like, give it a like. Hit the subscribe button so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. See you tomorrow. I was putting some lipstick on, and then I was giving my pose. So you put, what'd you put on? Lipstick on. Oh. Whose was that? It was, it was my lipstick. Oh, it was? Yeah. Did you ask anybody if you could put it on? I asked myself. <laughs> Did you see how it looked?